I was looking for something else on Steve Good's website today, and I just happened to run across this Santa Noel. It cracked me up. I just got to make this. Let's have a little fun and make this one today. The plans show a dark wood for the background, and I found a nice length of four-quarter walnut that would be perfect for making two of these. The edges were rough, so I ran each edge through my table saw to clean them up. This way I can run the bottom of each pattern along an edge of the walnut. I first covered the board with scroll saw tape. This is a double-sided transparent tape used to attach scroll saw patterns to wood. You roll the tape onto the wood, then use a utility knife to cut it to width. Next, you peel off the back and apply the pattern to the tape. The tape holds the patterns in place while you cut, but it peels off easily when you're done, and it doesn't leave any sticky residue behind. By staggering the patterns and lining one up with each other edge of the board, I was able to make efficient use of the wood. There will only be two small scrap pieces left after I cut out the Noel pattern. You should get in the habit of laying out your patterns for the most efficient use of the wood. I had some quarter inch maple left from another project, so I was able to lay out the patterns for Santa on that. I keep any pieces large enough to be useful in boxes, organized by thickness. This way, when I need some small quarter inch parts, I can look in that box first. Many times I have exactly what I need for small pieces like these in those boxes. I started cutting with the main piece. As I already mentioned, it's made from three quarter inch thick walnut. M using my rule of thumb for choosing the size of blade to be used, I decided on a number nine Pegasus modified geometry blade. I determined that size blade to be used based on the thickness of the wood, the hardness of the wood, and the complexity of the pattern. For a full discussion on the subject, you can watch the video I linked on the screen and in the description. I almost always make inside cuts first, and that's what I did here. I drilled pilot holes for the two interior cuts using my drill press, but you can use a hand drill if you don't have a drill press. Cutting the center from the O in Noel is simply a matter of cutting from the pilot hole to the line, then following the line around to cut out the oval shape. Cutting the inside from the N will take a bit of skill. I obviously started at the pilot hole, then maneuvered to a 90 degree corner that had a curved rather than a sharp corner. After making the turn, I followed the line up to where it ended at the point of a sharp angle. Rather than trying to make that turn, I used the kerf plus waist area to pivot the workpiece 180 degrees, and then I backed the blade into the corner. Now it was an easy task to make the turn to line up with the diagonal line. From there it was a long straight cut to the corner. This next turn was possible to make by cutting to the corner point, backing the blade up slightly so it was no longer cutting, then pivoting the workpiece until it faced in the direction I wanted to cut next. I cut that short horizontal line, made another angle cut, then finished cutting back to where I started. The outside cut starts with a series of 90 degree turns for the letter N. The first one was right near the edge of the board, so I cut the vertical line and kept going a little past the horizontal line. Then I backed the blade out of the cut and made the horizontal cut in from the edge. This gave me a sharp 90 degree corner. This is an easy way to make 90 degree turns, but it can only be done when you're near the end of a board. The rest of the corners have to be made in a different manner. I cut until I reach a point where a change of direction needs to be made. I stop cutting as the blade reaches that point, then back up the workpiece just enough that the blade isn't cutting, but I keep the blade running. Next, I carefully swivel the workpiece until it's facing the next direction I would have cut, and then I gently start pushing the wood into the blade again. With practice, you can make sharp, crisp corners using this method. When I came to the bottom of the angled line on the right side of the end, I stopped cutting at the intersection with the vertical line. The best way to get a sharp point was to back the blade up a little bit, then use the waist area to turn the blade around 180 degrees, move back into the cut line I just made on the downward angle, and back the blade into the corner. From that position, it wasn't difficult to turn the workpiece to the new direction I wanted to head, then start cutting again. At the bottom of the end, there's a standard 90 degree turn, which I made in the usual manner I have already described. After cutting the straight line across to the bottom of the O, I came across another tiny angle cut. Once again, I cut to the point of the intersection, then backed the blade out and used the waist area to turn the blade 180 degrees and back into the corner. 
Now the workpiece was positioned so I only had to pivot it a short distance to align the blade for the curved cut up the left side of the letter O. Santa's hat is perched on the top of the letter O. As I was making the cut up the left side of the O, I kept following the curve until it stopped. This cut forms the top of the letters and the bottom of the hat. Then I backed the blade out to follow the line up alongside the hat. At the next intersection, I made the left turn to follow the line to the ball at the tip of the hat. Then I made the turn in the waist area to follow the line back to make the cut indicating the top of the hat leaned over. When cutting lines like these, I refer to them as accents, I always look at the overall flow of lines in the area. In this case, I felt I could get a more natural curve by following the line to the left, then coming back to cut the accent line. There wasn't anything else to show during the rest of the cut for the word Noel. I peeled off the scroll saw tape and the pattern with it. This is what the project looks like to this point. I used a number 9 Pegasus modified geometry blade to cut the 3 quarter inch walnut, but the remaining parts are made from quarter inch maple, so I switched to a number 3 blade. I plucked the blade to check it for proper tension, and that note told me that it is set correctly. If you have a scroll saw with a variable speed control like the Pegasus, you might want to slow it down to cut these parts. For material this thin, even a number 3 blade might be a little too aggressive, and slowing the blade down will make cutting less assertive. There were no tips or tricks to report on cutting Santa's mustache. I followed my standard procedure for making inside cuts first on Santa's face. I made the cut for the nose, then moved on to the eyes. I later measured the holes for the eyeglasses, and they turned out to be 7 eighths in diameter. You could use a drill bit for these rather than cutting them on the scroll saw. I'm not sure why I didn't. All the parts are cut, so I decided to take a peek at what they'll look like after the glue up. As I thought, this makes a humorous little display. It didn't take long to cut, and the glue up is going to be quick as well. This was an easy project you can complete in a couple of hours. So let's move on to the final steps. This will be an easy glue up. I spread glue on the back of Santa on the areas that were going to touch the base. Then I set the part in place and used two spring clamps to apply pressure to hold the parts together while the glue is drying. Thin parts have a tendency to warp after you apply glue, probably because of the moisture content. Two spring clamps will hold Santa down securely. I'm going to take a chance on the mustache staying in place without a clamp because there isn't room to place a clamp over it. Once the glue is dry, I'll remove the clamps and give this a couple of coats of warm satin spray polyurethane. This was a lot of fun to make and it didn't take long. It brings a smile to my face every time I look at it. What do you think? Leave a comment and I promise I'll respond. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so and hit the bell so you're notified every time I release a new video. But you don't have to wait until then. There are links to two suggestions for the next video to watch on the screen right now. I'll see you there.